why the cross, understand that the answer is wrapped up in Isaiah 53, hundreds of years before the birth and the crucifixion of Christ. It was on the cross that he who was utterly undeserving of wrath suffered on behalf of those who utterly deserve hell. So let's begin with the whole idea that we prefer Hollywood to holiness. Isaiah says that his appearance, and he's referring to Messiah, was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. And then in Isaiah 53, verse 2, the prophet says that he appeared like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. You see, if we were given a choice, we always kind of gravitate toward Hollywood, and that's more important to us than the character and the holiness of Jesus in some respects. At least that's the way, that's the way that Hollywood casts him. I mean, take, for example, early in the ministry of Jesus when Philip, who would become one of the disciples, finds his friend Nathaniel, also destined to be a disciple, tells him that he's, when he tells him that he's discovered the Messiah that was prophesied in Scripture, and, oh, by the way, he's from Nazareth, Nathaniel blurts out in, in derision, he says, Nazareth? I mean, basically, you got to be kidding me. I mean, can anything good come from Nazareth? I mean, it was just such a backwater place. It was a, nobody important comes from Nazareth. In Isaiah 53.3, it says that he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and is one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Now, another observation that Isaiah makes within that passage is that we deserve what he got. The perspective in Isaiah 53 shifts to us now. Look at me at verses 4 through 6 and notice what he says. Isaiah writes, he says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Did you notice all the first person pronouns in there? Our, we, us. I mean, why the cross indeed? It was my sins and yours, yours and mine, that required the servant to suffer so horribly. Isaiah also shows us that it was at the cross. At the cross, we, we become the beneficiaries of both his love and his justice. Isaiah 53.10, we read, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. Make no mistake, don't ever forget the fact that it was God's plan, it was designed, it was his will that pierced and placed Jesus on the cross. He was delivered up, Peter says, on the day of Pentecost. It says he was delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, Acts 2.23. But most people really don't even consider and ponder the idea of who killed Jesus. You know, sometimes we, if I were to ask you that question, uh, we might be quick to say, oh, well, it was a Roman executioner. Or it was the Jewish leaders that killed Jesus. Or it was the crowd that, that cried out for his crucifixion. It, it was they who killed Jesus. But I want you to think a little bit deeper on this. Who really killed Jesus? The answer is that God the Father killed Jesus. Because it wasn't simply the Father imposing his will on the Son, but rather it was way back in the halls of eternity, as I mentioned last week, in sacred counsel, you might say. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit determined together that that would be the only acceptable price to be paid for our sins. And so when the Father saw our sin, he didn't simply write off our sins like it was some bad debt. That would be inconsistent with his character. God is just. And justice does not merely do what he wants to do. It does what it must do. And justice is not merely what God does. It's who he is. It is his very character that requires justice and payment to be made. But on the other hand, it's, love is not just something that he does either. Love is also who he is. So God needed to do something that was both consistent with his justice and consistent with his character of love. 